elsewhere. The House of Representatives and the United Nations Development Program have signed a pact for the implementation of a parliamentary development program that will enhance the capacity of lawmakers and staff. National Assembly correspondent Jokia Disa reports. Since June 2023, when the 10th National Assembly was inaugurated, the UNDP has been a strong ally of the Abasta Judin led House of Representatives. Both parties believe deepening the nation's democracy requires training and retraining of the key actors in the chain of governance, particularly the legislators and the foot soldiers who serve as their staff. After months of talks, the House and the UN agency signed a deal they believe will better capture the capacity needs assessment of the Third House. Mr. Tajuddin describes this packed ceremony as a moment of history for the UNDP and Nigeria. The agreement we have signed, it involves the training of not only members of the legislature, but also the staff and clerk of the House of Representatives, which from my own estimation will cover several hundreds of millions of dollars over the next few years. He believes the new project will enable lawmakers deliver on promises to constituents. Nigeria legislature will move from strength to strength. Our capacity to deliver on the promises of our people on all key areas of our concerns will be strengthened in due course. On our part, the UNDP resident representative commends the Speaker and the House for the partnership. She expresses support for the Parliament's drive to make the much needed difference as Nigeria's democracy continues to thrive. As the largest development agency in the United Nations family, we know very well that governance is an enabler for development. We're therefore going to use our convening power, if I should use that word, uh, to mobilize uh, right partners, development partners, donors, civil society, private sector, to rally around this vision that you have to make sure that we coalesce around this and we can advance the cost together. The United Nations Agency is full of commendation for the speaker for his inclusive drive, especially on issues on women's inclusion and participation in politics and governance, one of the organization's core areas. Away from Abuja to Bochi State, where Vice President Kashim Shetima has called for stronger ties between the federal government and traditional institutions. He reaffirmed the commitment of the President Bola Tinubu administration to engage in royal fathers as key players in national development and social cohesion. The Vice President said this during a visit to Nengi Emirate, where he offered condolences for the death of the Emir of Nengi, Inosa Dunyaya. The Emirate under our late father's stewardship was a guiding light for many, and his contributions will not be forgotten. His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has asked me to express his deepest sympathy to you to His Excellency, the Governor of Bauchi State, to His Royal Highness, the Emir of Ningi. The Ningi Emirate and the people of Bauchi during this difficult time, he extends his profound support for the exemplary leadership that has characterized the Emirate through peaceful transitions. As we greet together, we also look forward with hope the task ahead of you, Your Royal Highness, is both monumental and inspiring. I assure you of our continued support for the Ningi Emirate under your leadership. It is a double-edged sword because today you are also congratulating his son, his eldest son, as the brand new Emir of Ningi, my friend Al Haji Haruna, you know, Sir Mohammed Benyaya. I will not waste time. We are very, very grateful for this visit. We know it has always been your tradition. You have respected every segment of this country, especially your responsibility to us coming from the Nazis. Away from that, one year after the death of Taiwa Kinkomi, the designer of the Nigerian flag has finally been buried. He was laid to rest at his home in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. Senior reporter Olaido Yewole has more in this report. And business news follows. 
after a week-long burial activity, the funeral service for Taiwa Kinkumi took place at the Obafemi Awolowo Stadium in Ibadan. Amidst the scanty attendance, the choir and music band filled the atmosphere with soulful songs, paying tribute to the late icon. Acting governor of Oyo State, government officials and clerics who paid their last respects emphasized the importance of upholding the unity and peace of Akinkumi's legacy. Akinkumi did not hold any political office, but he left a legacy and he contributed more importantly than many people who held offices. In times of turmoil, estrangement, and divisive politics, this simple yet profound design has reminded us of the underlying commonality in our aspirations as a people. It is a conscious synthesis of identity, culture, and hope, all crafted through the brilliant mind of Pa Akikunu. Acting Governor of the state says, the legacy of the late Taiwa Kinkumi must not be forgotten, calling for his immortalization. Perhaps the director of national orientation is here. He would have conveyed our message to the federal government. It's never late. We have a lot to do in immortalizing Pa Kinkumi. And the federal government should come handy in ensuring that the legacy left behind by uh, Park Nkumi is duly recognized. And the governor of the Oyo State, his assistant is engineer Lucia Makide, the Adon has stood up and said, This is Oyo State property. This is Oyo State man, that we have to do the barrier in a colorful and in a good way. After the funeral service, the remains of the late Nigerian icon were laid to rest at his Kuala Ibadan residence. Oladio Yewale, TV 